What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Dead State. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today. I know I say that every day, but I really and truly do like having people here. I remember what it was like to have a channel where you had like 10 subscribers and nobody showed up to any of your videos and it made you feel very, very just inadequate inside. I remember those days well and I try to keep it close. It's a memory that I try to maintain because honestly I think it's important to just be like appreciative of the things that have occurred to you when it comes to like your YouTube channel or your employment or whatever else in life. And so honestly, when I say that, I don't want you guys to think I'm blowing smoke up your ass unless you like having smoke blown up your ass. That's what's never considered in that phrase. Like sometimes people are like, don't blow smoke up my ass. Or people will be like, don't piss on my head and tell me it's raining. And I'll be like, well, what if you're into water play? Or what if you like having smoke blown up your ass? What saying is there for those people? Yes, their tastes are a little bit different. Some might even call those tastes maybe deviant or something like that. But still, at the same time, I think we need to respect what other people enjoy. And so obviously, I'm just messing around right now. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Seriously, I am talking out of the inside of my ass right now. Be fairly impressive if you can make your ass talk. I think I've also, I, I think I've already thought about this before. I've meandered about this topic before. It seems like one of those things that I would get stuck on. But anyways, I've been wandering around for a little bit. I've bypassed zero days, but unfortunately, due to a recording error, we're starting like midday right now. I've got everybody set up to do stuff and things. We've got antique revolvers going on. I need a fishing pose. So where damn fishing pose at? Fishing pose. Where you hiding at, son? Where you at, fishing pose? There you are, fishing pose. Fishbo, you won't get up in my inventory right now. Hey, go fishbo. Got that right there. That's not what my family. My family is from the south. My family's from Atlanta on one side, but they don't sound like that. It's more of like a drawl, I guess, if you look at the dialect or whatever you would call it. No, no, no. It's a lot slower. I can't emulate it very well. I've tried on a couple occasions to emulate the way like my grandparents talk, and I just can't do it. I have to like practice it or something. It's like so specific with the way that they pronounce like certain words. It's one of those accents that you really have a hard time like locking onto for some reason. I assume it's probably easier for some people than others. I don't know, it's like I'm too familiar with it and so I feel weird about impersonating it. I'm not really, I have no idea. It's the strangest thing because I've sat down on multiple occasions and tried to like get that thing down, sort of like that slow Atlanta Southern drawl type deal and I just, I can't seem to get it down. I can do like Florida Panhandle type stuff and sort of like South Carolina type stuff but I don't know. I haven't been practicing very much lately, so I actually, I went and got fishing poles, and you might all realize that's because I have a passing interest in fishing for a little while. So we're going to go down here and see if we can catch ourselves some fishicles, and if we can get some fishy units and bring those on back, I think it'll make people happy. I think I harvested out about 50 food already today. Not a whole lot, but it's weird that we're not catching anything right now. You've been out there four hours and you didn't caught five fish? That's not so great. That's, hey, apple trees, that'll take us to midnight. I mean, we're just going to be like, let's do it. Let's risk it for once. I almost never risk it with my biscuit when I go out with stuff like this. And so, oh, we got 26 food right there. Well, that'll bring us into a surplus for the day. We've got a hiking path, and we hear moaning. There's a lot of that going around lately. The party gets tired after traveling at night. Oh, that's disappointing. I was hoping, I thought it was 3 a.m. Did they nerf that in the last patch? See, I need to do a better job of, like, figuring out what they did with the last patch. Because, frankly, I know that it used to be, like, 3 a.m., so they must have moved it back when they patched a couple days ago. Oh well, lesson learned. That's the best way to learn a lesson is first-hand accounts. Although, frankly, I wouldn't want a first-hand account from somebody. So first-hand accounts always presumes that the first-hand that gets there is like a good idea. Like, it's kind of like one of those second rat gets the cheese type situations. Do I really want the first hand to give me advice when the first hand got itself caught in a trap? And then the second hand was like, whoa, I think I'm all right right here. And then second hand, everybody's always looking down on second hand because of second hand smoke. I think we need to bring back second hand and just sort of be like, oh, yeah, it's a second hand story, but it's all good. Sort of bring the positivity back into that phrase. We got, let's see, I brought in 157 food. Yep, and we ate 75, so we're still gaining. We are still gaining. Let's keep going. The fence was attacked, and it's we're not even midway through the 60s. Hey, I was just walking in the garden up on the roof, and it really took me back, you know? My mom used to have this big old garden in the back of our house. Tomato vines, squash plants, sunflowers, peas. I learned how to grow all that stuff. That was back when we got along before I even knew how to play a chord. Lots of good summer memories there. Ah, shit. I must sound sappy. Sorry. No, it's okay. Please tell me more. Uh, well, I don't know the last time I talked about her or thought about her, to be honest. I became a rock singer, she became a born-again whack job, really didn't see eye to eye, you know? But I do remember my times in the garden, I guess if I have to stay here, it'd be kind of, well, maybe fun to plant some stuff. Sure, I'll make sure you get some gardening duty. Yeah, I'd like that. Thanks for listening, I'll see you later. 
Hey, I'm sorry. I'm not much feeling up to things today. I think I just need to be alone for a while. Can I uh, have some time to myself? Well... Let's go for the leadership. Come on, you survived in a city swarming with those things. To know you came through that in one piece, that inspires everybody, you know? You can't let them down. Me? I inspire people? I, uh... Jillian blinks and takes a deep breath. That's weird, but... If they do, I guess I'll try. That's the spirit. Go get him. Is there something to help you sleep? I just can't do it lately. I mean, I try not to let stuff under my skin. I do, but all I can think about lately is that poor police lady. We've surely been lost without her, and I know Todd said God must have brought her to us in our time of need. Still, I feel like we should have maybe said a word or two about her. Wait, what police lady? She found us after our group was ambushed by dead people. We were separated. I ran for Todd for seem li or I ran after Todd for what seemed like miles. That's when she spotted us on the road. She said she'd heard about a school that was taking in survivors. She tried to give us directions, but Todd begged her to come with us. But things didn't work out so well. What do you mean? She was talking, or, or she was taking us in her car when we hit something. It was early morning, so we couldn't tell what it was, and she said she was going out for a look. A few minutes later, I heard screaming and shooting. Todd just tells me we got to go, and he took the car. I look back, and the police lady, she was fighting off two people, and I can still hear her, be oh my god, still hear her begging us to help. I feel sick to my stomach. I don't feel it was right no more. I just need to sit and pray today, I think. Yeah, you should definitely work through your guilt. I can't. I just, I can't do it. I'm sorry I even told you. Well, I'm being honest. You need to work through that right there. That's a real situation. Oh, man. I feel like somebody took a shit in my head. Damn, man. Use some of our fruit scraps to make a prison wine recipe my uncle taught me. At first, it tastes like skunk butthole, but after a while, I couldn't taste anything. I need to lie down. Yeah, you're making yourself blind and shit. Alright, I really needed a tracker too. Damn, I guess you can miss work today. I really appreciate the help. I just needed this pain to stop and to get this taste out of my mouth. Okay, and so that's the end of the day right there. I'm just going to take out three people. It doesn't even matter. Let's just go harvest out our food for the day and make sure that our stocks stay up. But I'm hoping that throughout today, it's always good when your stocks stay up, right? Unless you're trying to buy stocks, and then I guess them staying up would be a bad thing. That would totally suck. And be like, no, curse you inaccessible market that I cannot, you know, that I cannot participate in. I don't know. Curse you, market that I cannot participate in. It's a little weird. I, I'm not so sure. Anyways, let's go find some fudge, shall we? I think that. Let's go up here to OH Ivy Lake, and we'll just sort of like see what happens when we land up here. We've only got a couple people, so we're gonna be traveling a lot slower. Let's give it like five hours, I guess, and hopefully we do a decent job at catching some fish. There we go. We got four right there. I'd love to get a lot more. It also depends what the value of the fish are. I've actually never looked at the fish to see what the value are. We got eight right there. Okay. We can do a little better, though, I hope. Thirteen. Fifteen and finished. Okay. Well, since we're fifteen and finished here... That's the precursor to sixteen and pregnant, by the way. It's a TV show in the United States. Let's go over and... Well, we don't have any pop-up spots showing up just yet. There's some wild herbs. I guess we could use another Herbert in our group. Let's go ahead and hang out for a little bit and see what we can find over here. It never hurts to have yourself some herbal remedies or perhaps some lovely little things to sprinkle on your food to make it taste a little bit less like ass or skunk butthole, as Troy puts it. Still, I feel good about bypassing days at this point. I, don't, I was worried that I would feel guilty about it or something like I was skipping content, but as far as I can tell, there is no more content. Like, we basically spent the last 10, 15 episodes looking for it, and it's just, it's not there. Like, the little conversations that you get at the beginning of every day are pretty much it, unless you have, like, an important vote to make. I wish there was more events like the stuff with the bikers. That's really 100%, like, the thing that I wish there was more of. You guys can be tired. I don't care. Be as exhausted as you want. This should get done. I don't think we're going to make it back by midnight, but then again, we're far enough into the game where I'm just like, meh, I'm not going to worry about it anyways. Oh, we did make it back in time. Good. That sounds nice. Well, we'll throw everybody on up into the pot. Hey, and then we got 93 fish. Okay, so only 93. We're not going to do so well right now when it comes to like stocking up a surplus, but it is something. Let's jump back up in here. All right, and then we'll end our day. Went through 75 food. That number seems sort of off. It says 93. Shouldn't we be consuming over 100 food right now? That's definitely over 100, so why are we only consuming 75? Weird. All right, well, we only gained one food for the day, but nobody really cares. The undead have done zero damage to the fence. That's because they are ineffective, smelly, and ugly. 
I don't ask for this often, but I need a day to myself. Today would have been his birthday. I had tickets to Hawaii and everything. It's hitting me a lot harder than I thought it would. Alright, well... I understand. Take the day off. Thanks. I'd give you the extra ticket to Hawaii for this, but, you know... Good luck today. I'm not feeling up to things today. I think I just need to be alone for a while. I think I... Did we get you twice? Alright, well... Go ahead. I guess that's all we're gonna have for today. Let's go ahead and kit out the party one more time and see, like, if we don't get anything, it's honestly, I'm actually a little bit amazed that we've gone through so many days right now and still haven't hit any other storyline segment. What I prefer there to be is more segments like the bikers where, like, you have real time issues where you have these constraints, you have to get something done, that something is really, really badass, and that something is also pretty challenging i mean you got to find where their base is you got to fight with them you got to have the right party members the right weapons and that's just a combat scenario like i can think of a dozen different things that like i really would have thought about implementing first in order to make the game a little bit more interesting because it does drag on the back end it really sincerely does the game just starts to become people have said on the forums that they want an endless mode but frankly the game already feels endless to me like it's just there's not enough stimuli included in the back end of the game it's very front loaded and then after the front loading is over you're just like okay and then you know you kind of just like coast things out. Get up in the party right now. I need your help. Without Paul, things are going to be a little bit weird, but it's okay. He could take a day off. Honestly, Paul's been a hustler for me. I tend, I feel like it's a little bit unfair. This is why I could never be the administrator of like anything, but I feel like it's a little bit unfair because the people that have like really gone to bat for me and stuff, I just give them like whatever they want to keep them happy. Whereas like the randos that sit around doing like my scientific research and stuff, I'm just like, man, no, you can't go out today. I need you to be, like, doing this thing over here. Go play with that, board, that blowtorch. Put your eye really, really close to that shop drill. Like, I just, I need them to work and get stuff done. Anyways, let's head southwards. We'll see if we can find anything along the edge of the map. I don't think that we will, but we might. I don't know if these larvae things are actually worth stopping off. I don't know if there's, like, a finite amount of nodes that you can have on the map at any given time. That, like, keeps more from spawning. I doubt it because we have gotten a lot of spawns just when we were wandering around. But the larvae, they don't do me much good. I don't think you're going to starve in this game at all unless you just hole up in your house and, like, don't do anything all day. That would be pretty much... I can see no way that you could conceivably lose at this game aside from, like, a combat loss. Because the management side of the game is actually really, really forgiving. Like, you don't have food shortages or anything like that. People don't get bit very often either. I would actually say that they need to increase the frequency. And I know they're a little bit paranoid about it. But they need to increase the frequency with which people get bit, basically. And just make it so that, like, you have more infected. That would also go and add sort of, like, emergent gameplay in that you have to find a lot of back... Or you have to find a lot of, like, anti... I forgot what I was talking about right now. Either way, you would have to find yourself a lot more antibiotics. There we go. That's what I was talking about. My brain feels bad today. I don't know. It's just been the last couple weeks for me, and I'm not really sure what's wrong. We'll keep bypassing days. Morale change of 18 up. This is the U.S. military. We wish to speak to a representative of your group. We mean you no harm. Do not shoot or we will return fire. Here they come. Lieutenant Wes Adair, U.S. Army, 72nd Division. I'm sure you have lots of questions for me, but I have some urgent business to discuss with you. What is it? I'm here to request supplies for my squad. We've been trying to rebuild our supply lines and make a coordinated effort to start securing areas of strategic importance. Essentially, we need your help to secure this area. We've been on the ropes since Dallas. Time we did something about that, and you people can make all our jobs a lot easier. But your advance party promised you'd get us out. Our advance party? You've obviously been duped. We haven't been in this area before. How do I know you're not pulling the same scam? Do you have a name? I might be able to track them down. No promises, but I'll try. I think his name was Hearts. If you find him, I want to settle it personally. Hearts? Yeah, I know that name. Forsyth Hearts. When we lose him... Let me see. Yeah, it was a long time ago when we pulled out of Dallas. Him and a few others deserted their post. We'll sniff around. If he's not rotten already, we'll see if we can find him. Now, can we get back to the business at hand? Okay, well, what do you need from us? We need food, most of all. About 50 rations worth, give or take. We could also use fuel, but I understand that it's in shorter supply. I'll give you a few days to talk to your people and get the supplies together. I leave it up to you, but to tell you the truth, even that little bit saves us a lot of time. I'll see what I can do. Good, thank you. We'll be back in a few days to collect them. Can you answer some questions for me? I'll tell you what. You have those supplies for us, I'll answer whatever I can. At the moment, I got a schedule to keep. He signals his troops with a finger twirl. Alright, let's move it out, people. Adair gets into the vehicle, and the military jeeps quickly disappear into the distance. Listen, I've been doing my part taking the risks, and I haven't complained, but I think I deserve an extra six rations, if only to replace all those calories I've burned hauling supplies back. As much as I would like to, it's people's food. The group's food, in fact. If people start hoarding, this place is going to turn on itself. 
There is some truth in that, I guess. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy happy to hear it, but I'll accept that you know what you're doing. I, I'm sorry. I've got a. She interrupts herself with some fairly nasty sounding coughing, then takes a deep breath. Um, that all morning. Okay. Well, it sounds ugly. Get some rest. Get some water to drink and see if you can get rid of the cough. Thank you. I'm sure I'll be better before I lose. She starts coughing again. Disease is a major concern in this situation. This morning, a Lieutenant Adair came to the shelter on behalf of the U.S. military. Adair is claiming to be leading what's left of the military forces originally sent to the city several months ago. He's asking for 50 rations worth of food. If we can help him out, he promises to answer questions about what the military knows about what's going on. Given our past interactions with outsiders, I can understand any reservations about fulfilling this request. However, he's not threatening us or promising us any easy answers, so what should we do? If the military couldn't contain things the first time, I don't know how they expect to do it now. And to be honest, we've already seen this scam pulled before. If they're really military, they can fend for themselves. I don't want to fight them, but if they're legit, they'll leave us alone. But I trust you to make the right call on this one, and I'll back you however you choose to handle this. Their story checks out, and the timelines he cited would be correct, but I have a few concerns. I'd like to hope there's some... Um, I'd still like to hope that there's a unified force out there trying to make a difference, but we've seen very little evidence of that. Tactically, we don't want to get on their bad side. These are experienced soldiers, and they've probably seen worse than us. If Adair has managed to keep his company together under extreme conditions, he's the real deal, and we should help him. I'm going to go with your vote on this one. You talk to him, so maybe you got a better read on what he's about. I think people still want to believe that someone is looking out for us, and we should help them. However, if you feel it's a waste of supplies, I'll back you. Obviously, the last group of soldiers was a fraud, and it pains me to admit that maybe some of us should not have been as enthusiastic as we were about assisting that group, but I still believe that supporting the troops is the right thing to do. I understand if you're hesitant to trust them, I'll support you on this, whatever your decision. Always the politician. Well, how should we treat it? Let's give them the 50 rations as a show of good faith. The proposal is to give Adair the 50 rations he asked for. Is this your final decision? Yes, indeed. The decision is to give Adair the supplies he requested, if you think it's for the best. I'm glad you agree. I have a good feeling about Adair, and I think it's wise to start building a bridge between our two groups. We're doing the right thing. Hopefully, we can form some kind of alliance with them in the future. I think this is the right thing to do, and hopefully these soldiers will pay back the kindness somehow. This concludes our meeting. We'll inform Adair of our answer the next time that he shows up. And so there it is. That was actually a fairly cut-and-dry vote. 22 and 8. Alright, so we've got our practice mat over there. It was just like materializing. Every now and again, it likes to dematerialize, then rematerialize, because that's the sort of thing that it's into. But for right now... Let's jump on into the... Yeah, let's jump on into some scavenging. How's that sound? Around and around and around we go. We got dandelions first things first. Okay, let's get our elf on and we'll be some dandelion eaters right now. I've never actually eaten a dandelion. Never eaten a dandelion. I can't actually attest to what they might taste like. Never got... I assume you eat the top of it because dandelions, they have like a milkweed thing going on. I remember that about dandelions. If you break them off with a stem... They have like a milkweed thing that happens, and so I assume that you don't eat like the actual bottom part of it. Because the milkweed part, I remember from being a little kid, it would get on your fingers when you're playing with the flowers. And then like if you ended up like licking your fingers or accidentally getting like your fingers on your food later on, it would taste really, really bitter. But however, never tried the tops actually. Never tried the tops. The Happy Boots Motel, the residential block. Hmm. I guess that's what you could call like a karate dojo in the middle of a residential area. It's like the residential block or like an MMA facility in the middle. I don't know. I'm just spitballing right now. I really got nothing at the moment. We've been walking around in circles now for like 25 minutes. We have bypassed a lot of days though, which is really what I was aiming for anyways, so I'm happy with it. At least we're like making some form of progression at this point. That'll pre probably be the last one that we harvest out. I think I only have three people anyway, so this might not actually work out as swell as I thought it would. I need to go back and put Paul into my group, and I forgot. Yeah, we're full up. There's no way that we only got nine mushrooms from that patch. Still, there we go. Some wild tomatoes for tomorrow. Get back inside the base. We'll get Paul back in the party. Ooh, 184. Hell yeah. That's really, really good right there. That means we're going to have a big surplus to make up for the fact that we really didn't have anything yesterday. It's weird that we're finding so much food around, though. Then again, I have, like, I haven't worked in orchards, but I've worked with fruit trees and things like that my entire life because we had them growing up. We have pomegranate, peach, apricot, pecan, and we had, well, there's a, there's a, there's an olive tree, but the olives are a little bit more, my dad, he actually, everybody's off duty right now. Where's Paul at? My dad actually goes through every year and he, Goes through and treats olives because olives are not good for you if you eat them raw. And he goes through and it actually you got to put them in these big pallet jar things. And then once you get that going, they brine for a while. They pickle. And then once you get them done right there, then they're okay to eat. 
but it takes a long ass time. And so if you found an olive tree, that actually wouldn't be that immediately useful. Okay, so food change is up by 59. Hell yeah. Okay. It says that our consumption is 75, but our leftover, I'm not really sure. See, it's a little bit confusing because right here it says that your your food consumption should be about 80 something. But it said that our fresh food gain is only 59. So, I guess that's just the fresh food. But it's still a little bit weird that it doesn't count the preservatives or whatever else. I don't know. I just needed to look at it a little bit. Really nothing for today? Not a single thing. Well, I'm going back to bed then. Meh. You can't make me do nothing today. Like, wait, Tweedletime just went back to bed? And they were like, yep. He woke up and was like, not today. If you thought my last plan was genius, just wait until you hear this one. Let's hear it. These dead, they keep moving no matter what. It seems to invalidate the law of energy, but that's where it works in our favor. All we need is a giant hamster wheels connected to batteries and BAM! Free electricity. We build rows of them and trap a bunch of those dead people in. Then, with all that extra electricity, we build a massive Tesla coil around a fence to zap anything that comes close. Oh, but what's that end of the world? We win? Got it. That's certainly a unique plan. You can thank me when it's built. I will only require 10 parts from our supply room to build a prototype. Ah, uh, sure, help yourself. Let me know if it works. When the last Tesla coils go up, I only ask that you name it Doug. He walks off. You still alive in there? Ah, there you are. So do you have the supplies or did I just waste fuel and ammo for nothing? You don't need to be a dick, man. I'm trying to help you out right now. Yeah, we have them. I've got a knight on my side. Do you have a knight on your side? That alone should strike fear into your heart. Thank you. This will really help my men out until we can find a better source of supplies. Happy to help. I've got a patrol to get to, but if you have questions before I go, I'll answer what I can. It's the least I could do for your help. I've been waiting for, to ask you questions since you showed up. What happened to the military? Well, what do you want me to say? That I was following orders that were not police? The short of it is, we were sent into zones full of civilians, and we weren't given clear objectives. We get pulled from all over the world, get hastily grouped into a joint operation with each branch fighting over who was in charge, and are told to occupy U.S. soil because the dead are attacking the living, and that the population has collectively lost their shit. We went into the cities to clean things up, set up a perimeter, and wipe out the enemy. Simple, right? Where to start? The dead walking around, the looters breaching our lines, the civilians flocking to military patrols looking for help, the uncontrollable fires, suicides, mutinies, deserters. It took a long time for morale to stabilize in our remaining forces, and by that time it was too late. We regrouped and waited for further orders and resupply, but they never came, and so here we are. Is there anything left at the top? Anything left? I think so. Our communication capabilities are spotty. We're working off old orders, but every once in a while I get something. Like, I can tell somebody's listening, but they don't answer. I imagine they're just sick of hearing COs ask them for stuff. So if no one is helping, why keep doing this? Because someone has to. Well, I can respect that. I definitely respect that attention to duty and that care and continuing your work, even though, assuming he has family and things like that, that he's trying to keep safe too. But instead he's decided to do those things that he was called to do when he signed on. So you know what, I, I can respect that, I can definitely respect that. What do you plan to do to restore order? We're trying to clean up a corridor, clear roads, drop corpses, eliminate hostiles, retake strategically important buildings, that kind of thing. I won't get into specifics for obvious reasons, but I've got men to feed. More than anything, we're fighting hunger. We lose that and we're done. Why not join up with us? We can work together. We hunker down and will eventually be overrun. I have my own goals and my people are trained to follow my orders. Your people might be good, but I doubt most of them will be up to the task. Is there anything you could do to help us? Sorry, we're spread thin. I wish I could do more. I really do, but I'm hoping I'll have some better news for you one of these days. Where the hell are your tanks and airstrikes? And how about a food drop? Tanks? When the supply lines broke, those are the first things we dished. Even back when before somebody answered the line, we couldn't get what we needed. We don't even use our birds for surveillance anymore. Hell. You folks take care now. I owe you. Pack it in, everybody. We're going home. I don't know the best way to announce this, but early this morning, there was a murder. What? Lane's body was found in the bathroom. Somebody murdered Lane? From talking to others here, we have the following details about the events leading up to and after the murder. It was dark. Somebody saw what they believe was a man wandering around the hallway around the likely time of the murder. The victim's skull was caved in with a single blow. This indicates that the assailant was stronger than average. The people, the following people were unaccounted for during the time the murder occurred. We've collected statements from them, and I will play them back for you. 
I was out smoking a cigarette when it happened. I know you have to be thorough, but really, you think I would do something like that? Me? In my honor, I would never harm an innocent. I was on the rampart, scanning the darkness for foes. What the hell are you asking me for? You think I did it? I mean, yeah, maybe I didn't get along with him, but does that make me guilty? No, I know my rights. I heard somebody run down the hallway last night. I'm sorry, I should have checked it out, but I was tired, and obviously I, don't think it, I didn't think it would turn out to be something like this. Oh, come on. You think if someone was as smart as me was going to do it, I would have made it look like a murder? And as for where I was, that's, I refuse to answer because that's for me to know and for none of you to have business with. I mean, none of your business. So you were gurking it. So we have the accounts from witnesses and we have statements from the suspects. From the evidence and testimonies, who should we call in for a sentencing? I'm going to go with Grant because I don't trust that dude. Grant White, you have been accused of the crime of murder. Before we get to the sentencing, do you have anything you want to say? I'm not going to try and lie to get out of this. You know why? Because I did do it. I did it for this place because there are some people here who are parasites. Individuals with no skills and no worth. They're eating our food and holding us real survivors back. Are we really worse off for their loss? No. We have to decide a punishment for the guilty party. Please weigh this carefully. This is a serious crime and we will have to convince people that the school is still safe. Well, the usual sentence for murder in Texas is the death penalty, but seeing as we don't have the means or resources to conduct a fair trial, I say we imprison him. To you, I'm willing to back what you think is fair. What they did was wrong, however, I don't feel like we need any more death here. They should be exiled. But I'll accept any punishment you think is fair. I believe that God can forgive and that we should rehabilitate them in prison, despite what some might say that's the Christian thing to do. Although I understand that sometimes you have to do what the majority expects you to do, and I'm willing to back your decision no matter what. If an innocent person is killed, we have a responsibility to give the justice they expect from us. I've always been a believer in the death penalty. If you murder someone in a society, which is what we have right here, then you forfeit your right to life. You know what I'd vote for. However, you have my support for whatever you decide. It's time to make a decision. I... The accused will be executed. If I exile him, he's the kind of person that I would worry. He's, he's enough of a survivor, and he's enough of a go-getter to where I would worry about reprisals. And so, this is one of those cases where you got to put a bad dog down. If we were living in modern society, I'd say that, you know, we could try for rehabilitation or something, but life sentence. But since we've got this tiny little area with very, very few people, by one person dying, we just lost like 4% of our entire population. If you put it into percentage points, it sounds a lot worse, and we can't risk him coming back and doing anything that would make us you know, even weaker, so let's execute him. You're proposing immediate execution, are you sure? Yep, that's my final decision, bring him out to the yard. The sentence is death, the guilty party will be executed today. I don't approve, but I'll back you on this, just don't make this a regular thing. I was really hoping you would go another way, but I'll support you this time. I'm really not sure how I can justify this, but I'll try. This is the right decision, the people will have justice. I'd like to end this meeting with a moment of silence for the victim. Thank you. People can get mad all they want. I mean, that's ultimately what it comes down to is that I'm worried about reprisals. Because I'm the leader of the establishment, I have to think about things like that. I have to think about it. And so it's on me. I, you know, I'm, that's fine with letting that float on my conscience where there's a real situation. But in real life, it's the same thing that I would do in a small society. We're not talking about like a, ra a major metropolitan area. We're talking about a tiny little group of people. And every time somebody gets killed, we lose a substantial portion of our survivability and also our cooperational, I guess, integer. I don't really know how to... We, if we lose, we're losing somebody means we lose work capacity, we lose a lot. And so, aside from just the human loss right there, we can't leave that as an acceptable option inside of our society. Excuse me, I need to talk to you for doctor to make better cutting. Okay. I am do better job, but not have the good cutting is necessary for great success. Nani, how do you say? You mean for surgery? You need better tools? Yes, yes, tools. Surgery tools. For doctor that makes surgery. Very important. Many people I met or make. Very better. Okay, so I'll go look for him. Alright, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for the next episode of Dead State. It looks like we're just about out of time for the day. I will see you all in the next episode where we will continue to do the same thing, just bypassing time. I will see you all later. Hi do everybody.